What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the Dogman Cometh. I'm Belil Black, as always, and this is part two of Dogman in South America. Um, I mean, there was so there are so many accounts of Dogman and werewolf-like creatures, these canid cryptid types, all over southern, you know, South America and Central America, and uh, Central America. I'll say for I guess some other time but there were just so many of them man that you know it sucks that I couldn't you know read every one of them on this video but I suppose I could get to reading some more at, some, at another time but I've got a few of them here that I thought were kind of cool you know a little interesting and I thought maybe I'd share these motherfuckers with you now, before we get into it, I want to say that uh, this show is its not necessarily for kids, <clears throat> nor is it for the closed-minded, you know, individuals who can't take a little bit of foul fucking language. You know, this is my, this is my hobby. And it's a, sort of an obsession of mine. And, you know, forgive me if I get a little fucking excited, okay? I'm not going to sit here and filter myself or censor myself on my own channel for people who don't want to hear it. Don't watch it. Don't listen to it. Go to someone else's channel. I'm not here as a pop. Yeah, it's not a popularity contest for me. It's not like I'm making any money off of this, man. I'm, I want the information out there and I'm only interested in dealing with people who are interested in the information so now that we got that out of the way let's get to these stories and I hope you enjoy you know because it's taken me a little bit here and there to actually get this video made because of technical difficulties alright so I hope you enjoy it. This first story takes place in 2002. We had a dozen dogs on the property, which all slept together in a large kennel on the side of the house. They would be pretty quiet at night, but on that night, they were unusually unsettled and spooked. One of the dogs had managed to escape from the kennel and was desperately trying to get into the house. I was alone with my mom and she asked me to turn on the floodlights outside the house and check out what all the commotion was about. I went to the front porch to scan the area, trying to see what could have scared the dog so badly. Staring at the corner of the, of the property, we had a mango tree, a large one. 90 to 120 meters away from the porch. I saw this large, grayish creature running on all fours, avoiding the lights. It passed behind the mango tree and disappeared into the dark. As I saw it, I immediately identified it as being a werewolf. Like from that movie Bad Moon, but with a slightly larger head, thicker snout, and a bulkier build. On his hind legs, it must have stood at the very least as tall as the property walls, which themselves stood between six and a half to seven feet tall. I, however, am only five foot seven, by the way. I froze for a few seconds after seeing it. It was a brief sighting. It lasted two to three seconds. And as soon as I recovered from the initial shock, I sprinted as fast as I could back into the house, locking all the doors and closing all the windows that were still open. The second one is January 14th, 2009. During the year 2009, residents of Canhotino, Pernambuco, had their daily routines grind to a screeching halt. Children hardly left the house, adults locked the doors after 10 o'clock, and those who risked breaking this behavior were afraid that they themselves would be attacked 
by this alleged werewolf who would be prowling the cities at night. There were several reports of people who had seen this alleged monster, or that were aware of his presence in Tan Hotino. One of the reports that increased the fear at the time was after the attack in a place where a farmer named Maria do Carmo Suelos, 57, swore to have seen the werewolf stealing her dogs from her home and eating them. She stated, I was watching TV when I got up to go turn off the kitchen light when I saw a strange thing in the gap of the door. I exhaled and saw a large animal, all furry with big ears and all black. He was eating one of my dogs, tells the farmer. She was alone and wept with fear. The other day she had found three of her dogs dead. The pieces of them were all over the yard. I had never in my life seen a dog being killed like that, she said. I could only find three legs and a head of the dog. The rest he must have swallowed. She thought to herself, terrified. In the Liza Holland neighborhood, close to the city cemetery, the reports are even more frightening. The watchman of a school, who asked not to be identified, said he came to shoot the neck of the creature. He states, First I saw a very strange thing when I was coming to work. It was behind the cemetery. It was like he, the werewolf, was turning. The other day, I was here in the high school when he saw me and came to attack me. He had big teeth and sharp claws. It was fearsome, but I shot him in his neck and he ran across the lot. Some people said the werewolf may just be a girl who lived near the cemetery and that the transformation would take place in a pen that is behind her house. To further strengthen the suspicion, neighbors vowed that after the guard shot the creature, the girl would have been treated at the hospital with a neck injury. And the last encounter takes place on February 23rd of 2012. A city in Sao Paulo has so many reports of sightings of these werewolf creatures that it has been nicknamed the Werewolves City. One of the most curious reports states that two police officers were called to a domestic dispute between a couple. When they got to the home, they looked out the window and saw a man on the lawn turning into a werewolf. The fact was recorded in a police report, but the police report ended up disappearing from the police station and the officers involved were forbidden by their superiors to have even touched the report once it was filed. In another situation, a man spent the night tied because the locals in his village or in the city or whatever suspected that he was a werewolf. However, no transformation occurred. Well, guys, you must be uh, asking yourselves or telling yourselves the same thing I'm thinking. You know, I mean, these are werewolf stories or werewolf tales and folklore. You know, but I also have to, I can't help but think to myself, once again, every legend is born of a grain of truth. There's always something to a story. And, um, you know, what if it's like the snowball effect? You know, it starts out as maybe they are seeing dog men or who knows, maybe they are shapeshifters. I mean, who am I to say either way? I didn't see these particular creatures. You know, the, the same ones that they seen. But, um, I mean, who's to say that they didn't see a dog man and then add their lore around it until they became almost werewolf like creatures? And, uh, I mean, if this is the case, it just, you know, 
makes me think more and it, and it should make everyone think more about just how many of these things have been seen you know since you know just the early 1900s alone man you know let alone the centuries before that and they've been seen or written about some form of werewolf or shapeshifter or something like that since we began writing our history down since we were just monkeys fucking painting shit on cave walls you know what I mean and it's not just dogman and that you know when it comes to you know the lore that we've passed down through you know our written history cave paintings oh, oral history folk tales and whatnot you know vampiric beasts uh you know canine creatures that transform during the full moon giant humanoid apes that steal women and children to cannibalize uh well it's not technically cannibalism i guess but you get my point these stories always start somewhere and uh being that I've been reading about these things and I'm by no means an expert on any of this. I'm I'm just as intrigued and interested in this stuff as anybody else who could be or may not be listening to this video right now or watching this video. But at some point, man, uh we got to start to ask ourselves where does the truth begin? And the fairy tale end. You know, it's it's like we're mining for gold, man. But first, we got to get all that dirt and mud and shit out of the way before we can find the little nuggets of gold that are the truth in this shit. And we're not being told anything by the people who know, which is sad. But it means we're left to speculate on a lot of this stuff, and a lot of people say that to speculate on something is not bringing any real proof to the subject it's not getting ev you know you're not out there gathering evidence you're just sitting there speculating but however when you speculate at least a little bit to begin with you have to speculate to get yourself interested and once once that interest is locked in your brain that's when you want to go out and do the real investigating and do the real learning and uh whether you're out in the field, you know, uh, getting DNA samples, taking pictures, uh, you know, finding tracks and footprints, or you're just learning about the stories and the legends of these creatures or gathering encounters or just trying to spread the information along, every little bit's going to help. So, uh, on that note, I'm going to stop here, and uh, I'm going to say that if uh, anybody out there listening to this has anything that they, you know, has any sightings that they want to share that they just want to get off their chest or they might want me to read, you know, on this, on this channel or put it in a video or something. And even if you don't want it in a video, something you just want to get off your chest, man, to help the cause, hit me up at the dogman cometh at gmail.com. And uh, also, while I'm thinking about it, I'm coming up on the 500 subscriber mark. And if there's any any kind of uh, video in particular that you guys might want to see I'll do my best to uh, try to do that I want to do something a little special for the 500 mark it may not be much to a lot of other big time youtubers but it means something to me so holla at your boy I've been Belil Black take it easy my friends <laughs>